So I have some important developments on one of the cases which is challenging California's ban on so-called assault weapons. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think California's ban on so-called assault weapons clearly violates the second amendment, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is Blackout Coffee. Blackout Coffee has amazing coffee and they're huge Second Amendment supporters. If you buy one of their dedicated roasts, like the FPC roast or the GOA roast, some of those proceeds go directly to those organizations so they can file two way cases. So, again, amazing coffee and they're huge Second Amendment supporters. And if you want to pick some coffee up, you can use the link below and you can use the code ARMSCHOLAR for 10% off of your order. So like I mentioned in the intro, in this video, I have an update for you on one of the cases which is currently trying to strike down California's ban on so-called assault weapons. In this video, we're gonna be discussing one of the cases called Rupp v. Bonta. Many of you are aware that Miller v. Bonta is the case that is currently pending and waiting for a decision from Judge Roger T. Benitez in the Southern District of California. But we also have some news in a different case in the Rupp case that will impact probably the Miller case and maybe other cases going forward. Now, for those who are not aware, Rupp v. Bonta is a case challenging the state of California's ban on the possession of so-called assault weapons. The state of California has created a scheme that bans both a list of specific makes and models of firearms and also bans firearms with specific characteristics. California Penal Code Section 30510 bans specific makes and models. Uh, it has a list of firearms that are banned as so-called assault weapons. This includes makes and models like the Colt AR-15, Steyr Augs, Uzis, etc. If a specific firearm is on this list called the Roberti Roos list, as outlined in 30510, then it is banned in the state of California as a so-called assault weapon. However, the state of California being the anti-gun state that it is, they never stop at just one law. So after the first category one list, they make some model list, they then moved on to a different assault weapons ban. They added some language and that can be found in California Penal Code Section 30515. California Penal Code Section 30515 is a list of specific types of firearms and specific characteristics that the state of California considers as so-called assault weapons. For example, a semi-automatic centerfire rifle with a detachable magazine and any offending feature like a flash hider, a pistol grip, collapsible stocks, a forward pistol grip, um, any of these characteristics on that type of firearm make that firearm to be considered an assault weapon and therefore banned in the state. Now, what's important about the Rupp case is it's a challenge not just to the characteristics ban that you see in the other case, Miller, but Rupp is also a challenge to the category one Roberti Roos list and that makes a models list. So it's a much more comprehensive and far reaching challenge. The case Rupp v. Bonta was originally heard by a judge in the Central District of California, but the judge ultimately did rule in favor of the state of California. That decision was then appealed up to the Ninth Circuit and was submitted to a three-judge panel for review. The three-judge panel in the Ninth Circuit heard oral arguments on October of 2020, but then this Rupp case sat on hold because of the pending Supreme Court decision in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin. Now, once the Supreme Court issued that ruling, the Ninth Circuit decided not to rule on this case and a bunch of other cases. Instead, they decided to punt on this issue and other cases that dealt with the Second Amendment and send them back down to the lower courts for them to be re-decided in light of that decision in Bruin. Now, I want to emphasize again that the Rupp case is different from the Miller v. Bonta case. Miller is a challenge to the California assault weapon ban, but it targets only the Penal Code 30515 and that whole characteristics ban. Miller was originally ruled on Judge Roger T. Benitez in the Southern District of California, but when both of these cases eventually made their way up to the Ninth Circuit, Miller was put on hold behind the Rupp case because Rupp was first in line and because Rupp was a broader challenge to the California laws. Currently, both of these cases have been remanded back down to the district courts that originally heard the cases, and currently we are waiting for a decision from Judge Benitez in the Miller case, and right now we are also waiting for a decision in the Rupp case. Well, recently we received news and critical news that the Rupp v. Bonta case will now have a hearing on a motion for summary judgment, which will take place in September, on September 9th. Ultimately, this court will rule on whether they will grant the plaintiffs their motion for summary judgment. If the court grants the motion for summary judgment, that means that the Rupp case will be resolved on the merits of the entire case and California's ban on so-called assault weapons, almost a comprehensive striking down of the California laws will then be in place because again, Rupp is a comprehensive challenge. In a recent court order in the Rupp case, the judge set the case to have a hearing on the motion for summary judgment and that will take place again on September 9th. So currently right now, 
early next month, there will be a hearing on the motion for summary judgment. The plaintiffs have submitted their brief in support of their motion for summary judgment. And in their brief, the plaintiffs argue that the Supreme Court recently reaffirmed that modern gun control laws withstand Second Amendment scrutiny only if the government meets its burden to prove that the nation's historical tradition supports such a law. In so doing, it also reaffirmed that there is no tradition of banning arms, typically possessed for lawful purposes. California has taken the extraordinary step of generally banning acquisition and possession of certain rifles that it has unilaterally dubbed with the political pejorative assault weapons, which include the most popular rifles in the country, owned by the many millions. This case is thus an easy one, they state. The relevant historical analysis has already been done. Because California cannot show that there is a tradition of banning these commonly owned rifles, its law banning them violates the Second Amendment. This court should thus enter summary judgment in plaintiff's favor and vindicate the rights of plaintiffs and all law-abiding adult Californians to access these banned arms. They go on in their brief to argue that a state may not prohibit an entire class of arms that is overwhelmingly chosen by American society for a lawful purpose. Yet that is precisely what California has done. Under the AWCA, subject to certain and limited exceptions unavailable to the public, it is generally unlawful to acquire or to possess any rifle that the state has classified as an assault weapon. Such a sweeping prohibition might make sense or at least be defensible if by assault weapon, California meant some class of dangerous and unusual weapons that has long been restricted in this country and that law-abiding Americans do not typically own for lawful purposes. But that is not what California has done. The AWCA bans the most popular rifles on the market today. That makes this case an easy case. The Supreme Court has made clear that when a court confronts a flat ban on the possession of a type of arm, the only question is whether the arm at issue is typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. If the answer is yes, then the ban is unconstitutional because a state cannot prohibit ordinary law-abiding Americans from possessing what the Constitution explicitly entitles them to keep. And as explained below, the answer here is unequivocally yes. They then add a strong section that shows that this case doesn't even need Bruin and the historical approach that is outlined in Bruin. This case can in fact be resolved simply by looking at the Heller decision by the Supreme Court. And even if the court were to permit the state to attempt to justify the AWCA's rifle ban under Bruin's more nuanced approach, it would quickly become obvious that the state cannot meet its burden, even under that more lenient standard, because there simply is no tradition of banning arms commonly owned for lawful purposes, particularly just for having features that increase their accuracy and control. So this is a strong brief in support of striking down the California assault weapons laws. And it clearly and precisely outlines how this outright ban on commonly owned rifles is a violation of the second amendment. It's a violation of the text history and tradition of the second amendment. It does not adhere to the Heller decision and it does not adhere to the recent Bruin decision. So the court will hear arguments on the motion for summary judgment on September 9th, and then will issue a decision after. What is interesting about this now is whether or not the RUP hearing, which is being set right now for September 9th, uh, which is early next month, whether or not that will take place before any Judge Benitez ruling. Uh, right now, we're waiting for Judge Benitez to also rule on a motion for summary judgment in the Miller case. So right now, it's anyone's guess whether or not RUP will actually have a hearing on the motion for summary judgment. And then we will be waiting pretty much in unison for a RUP decision and then also for a Miller decision. Right now, Miller is still technically ahead because we're waiting for a decision. There's been hearings in Miller, but now really soon there's going to be a hearing in Rupp, and then they're kind of sitting at the same stage. So again, if we get any more information, I will let you all know. Also, if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. As always, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.